that's what home looks like. That's what I think it should look like every time I visit because even in the wintertime, it generally still looks just like that. Not this time. I don't know where to start with this video. I had this idea of this vision and I don't want all these videos to be of places that are these great destinations because uh, I can't fucking afford it, uh, number one. But number two, I wanted this one to be more of an exposition on where I'm from. I grew up on Woodby Island in Washington State, an island about halfway between Seattle and the Canadian border. When I started piecing together this video, rewatching these clips kind of ripped the band-aid off of how poorly this entire trip panned out. And it just pissed me off all over again. The more time and effort I invest into making a video, the more seriously I question, like, why the fuck am I even doing this? It doesn't matter how much I prepare or plan. There's always just some stick that gets jammed into the spokes of my bike and I just go ass over tea kettle straight over the handlebars. That was basically this entire trip. The vision I had, even on the flight home, is nowhere near what I hoped it would be, or anywhere near what you're about to see. So <laughs> pour yourself a drink and share in the disappointment. <laughs> Let's go home. Most things are a matter of perspective and growing up on an island certainly had its share of pros and cons. In retrospect, it's hard enough to feel a little romantic about it. We lived on a lake, on an island, about two miles from the beach. We had acres and acres of these old growth pine trees behind our house that my brother and I would build forts in and just spend entire summers getting lost in. You were just as close to the ocean as you were the mountains. The weather is perfect during the summer, and in my opinion, perfect during the winter. Growing up, many of my friends referred to Woodby Island as the rock. And just like Alcatraz, it was a place that most of us couldn't wait to escape the second we graduated, which is valid when I think about those three hour bus rides at night soaking wet after getting run rolled on our baseball games <laughs> in 40 degree weather when it's drizzling on a school bus that doesn't have heat because there's a hundred kids in your graduating class and there's zero investment in your tiny ass school district. Even now, as much as I would love to move back someday, I don't think I could ever afford to. The island has so many things going for it. It's a tight-knit community where, like Cheers, everybody knows your fucking name. It's secluded. The weather, the scenery, the pace. But it's also got its drawbacks. Unless you're fortunate enough to work on the island or remotely, then you have to commute to the mainland. And it's about $20 round trip. There's only three ways off the island that's a ferry on the south end. A ferry halfway up that goes to the peninsula. Or Deception Pass Bridge on the north end. But you adapt to it. The ferry ride is 
a 15 minute break from reality anyway, so it's almost hypnotic. Grabbed Ethan, headed back to my dad's. I was pretty hot to trot about shooting as much film as I could. <laughs> Remember, I had a vision of how these 15 days were gonna play out. Ethan had also been slacking behind the camera, so it was time to put his ass to work. <laughs> Winter in the Pacific Northwest, you're lucky to get about four hours of sunlight a day. I mean, you might as well be at the fucking Arctic Circle. And even more rare than sunlight are clear skies. Point being, if you see a window, you better fucking take it. Ethan hates being cold. We drove down to this little beach and, I mean, these videos are pretty hard to do by yourself because it was pretty damn cold. <laughs> And he didn't want to get out of the car. But I'd rather have a happy kid staying warm in the car than a pissed off kid giving me shitty camera work. <laughs> I don't get FOMO. Like, if I'm not invited somewhere. I do get FOMO if there's a picture I really want to take and I'm losing light. Like, pissed off. <sighs> so I have to grab all the camera shit by myself, huff it from the parking lot to the beach, and I can literally see the sun setting over the mountains. I take a handful of shots just as the sun dips behind the Olympics, and I'm honestly thinking to myself, like, fucking nailed it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> we'll get there in a little bit, but all I came away with were a couple grainy pieces of shit, but I wouldn't know until I got my film back. The next day, the weather was kind of hit and miss, but I thought I saw a window. <laughs> I knew Ethan really didn't want to venture out with me, so I went down to the ferry with both cameras, including this 35mm that I don't shoot enough. I took several more photos with the same camera as I had the night before on the same roll of film. Found a cool little composition with a seagull sitting on whatever the hell this thing was and desperately trying to race the rain that I could see approaching. Several more frames gone. Just click, click, click. And again, I think. Fucking nailed it. I looked down to advance the film and I noticed the shutter count on my camera still read one. Every fucking picture that I had captured of that gorgeous sunset, the frames that I had just captured at the beach, don't exist. All gone. That single frame had been exposed into oblivion. 
I wanted to throw my fucking camera into the goddamn ocean. And again, all I came away with were a couple grainy pieces of shit and this random guy on a motorcycle who was literally touring the country asked me to take his photograph and then just fucking drove away. It's like day three of 15 and I'm positive that the universe is conspiring against me. After about a, an hour of research, it turns out that this little thing can get stuck and not engage with the lever to advance the film. No idea how it happened. Just a really painful lesson to learn. It was time for Ethan to head back to his grandparents. And before he left, his grandpa Craig took me on a little walk about through their property. Craig isn't my dad, he's Ethan's mom's dad. And I'm very fortunate that even though Ethan's mom and I haven't been together in a very long time, I'm still welcomed. And sometimes, especially when you normally spend the holidays alone, that can really mean a whole lot. From there, headed north to Coopville, a little small town about halfway up the island. One of my favorite places on the island is this beach, Eby's Landing. This little stretch of beach, and I use that term loosely, it's more just like a collection of rocks and driftwood than an actual beach, but most people just come and sit in their cars and read books. Just take it in. Eby's Landing looks straight over to the Olympic Peninsula and on rare occasion when the clouds are gone, you can see the entire Olympic mountain range. One thing that this place never lacks is a decent view. From Eby's, it was about five minutes down the road to the Keystone Ferry one of only three ways off the rock. This ferry takes you to Port Townsend. It's basically Woodby Island's gateway to the peninsula. Also, the majority of the most beautiful places in Washington State. Places that you really have to want to go, but are completely worth the time it takes to get there. The next day, back to the island to spend some long overdue time with my brother and sister-in-law. I brought my cameras with me even though the forecast called for rain with a chance of snow. We would always wish for a white Christmas, but the closest we'd ever get would be like a really rainy, drizzly, foggy Christmas. 
there'd occasionally be that off year where you'd have some crazy windstorm that would knock the power for days and you might get a dusting of snow, but any real snow here at sea level is it's, it's rare or at least it wasn't. You always get that kind of giddy <laughs> little kid anxiety. Like it's the night before Christmas when you go to bed and see a couple snowflakes falling. <laughs> You're always really fucking shocked when you wake up and realize it actually snowed <laughs> and it's still snowing. I've wanted snow on my trips home for years, but it never happens. The most you'd get would be seeing it in the mountains as you're flying over. I'm going back to Texas, but I finally got fucking snow on a trip home. It was also the nail in the coffin for every other photo shoot I had planned on this trip. The roads were pretty shitty, and that's putting it mildly because you live on an island where there's next to zero infrastructure. But my brother and I braved the mile round trip to the store because we needed supplies like wine. <laughs> the next morning it was time for me to head out. The plan was for me to grab Ethan and head off island. But it had snowed more the night before, and it was currently 22 degrees outside, so I start the car to warm it up. <laughs> Automatic start with the key fob. Shut the door to brush off the snow so the snow wouldn't go inside the car. <sighs> and as soon as I shut the door, I heard the doors lock with the key fob inside <laughs> and the fucking car running. <sighs> Long story short, the, the rental car company wouldn't help. Told me it was my fault that the key fob was dead. And after several back and forth, they basically told me to go fuck myself. I spent five hours with the car running and the keys locked inside, frantically calling any tow truck driver who could help with the lockout service. One of them even said, I ain't doing nothing but police stuff. This lovely little bearded angel named Charles drove an hour on these shitty snowy roads and he saved what was left of my day. I asked him if I could take his portrait and he kind of replied the same way that every stranger does when I ask because he was like, all right. I took the long way to get to Ethan's grandparents with a stop at Robinson Beach. This was literally the only other fair weather day that I had over these 15 days and I wasn't leaving this little snow covered oasis without at least one frame. The island to me is surreal. It's the kind of place that most people might only see in a movie. And even though it's changed a lot since I was a kid, it really hasn't changed much at all. And I don't know if it's some kind of misguided romanticism about my childhood or some deep, ever longing desire to come home, but just to drive here on these roads does us all good.
had to leave the island for the final time. And I fucking hate it every single time. The next day, all this gorgeous powder turned to wet, hot garbage overnight. It was still bitterly cold, and I was still stupidly underdressed, but it was my last day. My last opportunity to take a photograph to mentally save this trip. I still had a roll of film on my camera that I needed to burn before I packed, so I headed back to that same beach that I had tried photographing in the beginning of the trip. When I finally made it, I was I was just bummed before I got out of the car. The tide was high, so all of these features that I had wanted to capture, like those old dock pilings, weren't really worth the time that it would take to compose a frame. The sky was flat, and I was just pretty fucking defeated. I knew this entire trip, everything that I hoped it would be, was complete shit. And all I'd have to show for it is this single frame of film that I fucking exposed into oblivion. I was about to pack it all up when I saw that the only other two people at the beach were walking towards me. I figured, like most of them do, that they would just want to ask about my camera or comment on what a dumbass they thought I was for being out there. But one of them said, if you look, you'll see a swimmer coming just around the corner. I'm like, what? And she said, my daughter's out there swimming. And just like that, just offshore, there she was. I asked if they thought it would be okay if I took a portrait of their daughter. And they're like, sure. So as their daughter was making her way to shore, we made our way to her. <laughs> I felt bad asking, considering that the water was literally freezing to her face, but I thought that the image might be a little stronger if I asked her to get back in the water. And she graciously did, and thank you, Kendall. Your photo saved my trip. I know that I can get consumed with an idea that I lose sight of what I'm actually experiencing in the moment. And even though this trip <sighs> threw shit at me like a monkey at the zoo, there were some things I just can't put a price on. And there were things that I lost, like time with my mom, seeing my other siblings. But I was able to spend more time with my brother than I have in years. Am I still been out of shape about not getting a single frame that I would consider hanging on my wall? Yep, but shit happens, that's life. Better luck next time.